The Railway Labor Act was enacted in 1926. It was the uh, first effective labor statute in this country. At the time, it only covered railroad workers, and it later was expanded to cover airline workers as well. So the Railway Labor Act covers only airline and railroad workers. Um, other private sector workers are covered by the National Labor Relations Act, which didn't come into play until 1935. The Railway Labor Act protects the rights to organize and the rights to bargain, um, and it sets up a structure for both um, representation uh, proceedings and uh, collective bargaining and, and how the workers will get to a contract. It was born, if you will, out of the 1922 nationwide railroad strike. The only way that anything moved uh, in this country across land was by train. And so a nationwide strike was quite devastating. So uh, the parties were sent to go figure out what was going to work for them. And that's exactly what happened. All of the rail unions got together with all of the rail employers and sat down and bargained for what they could live with. And then they presented that to Congress. And that eventually became the Railway Labor Act. The Railway Labor Act is vital for our members on the railroads and in the airlines. Um, so it is governed by uh, the National Mediation Board, and the National Mediation Board is a three-party board. It's politically appointed. They do two main things. The first is they handle representation applications. So if somebody wants to organize under the Railway Labor Act, they file an application with the National Mediation Board, and they will process it. They'll determine who's eligible to vote, um, and they will actually handle the ballots um, and run the election. The other main thing that they do is they handle mediation when collective bargaining gets stalled. And the structure of the Railway Labor Act is such that bargaining tends to take a very long period of time uh, as opposed to compared to other statutes such as the National Labor Relations Act. And at some point, the National Mediation Board will probably become involved and they will, the mediators will take over that process. And once you're in National Mediation Board mediation, um, they control the whole bargaining process. They control when you meet, how you meet, for how long you meet, where you meet. They control everything about it. And they also control when you can leave mediation. So unlike the National Labor Relations Act, the workers um, don't have the flexibility to just run out and strike as quickly as they do under the National Labor Relations Act. At the same time, the workers are protected because their contracts don't terminate. They become what we call amendable. So that whole time that you're in mediation and that whole time that you're in bargaining, uh, the contract still stays in place and you have the safety net of, of those protections. The fact that contracts don't terminate, they become amendable, is a really important protection for workers that other workers in the private sector covered by the National Labor Relations Act, for example, don't have. Their contracts terminate after, for example, three years or whatever it is that's negotiated. When it terminates, all their protections go away. Their grievance procedure goes away, their uh, work rules go away, any wage increases go away, it's all gone. Uh, pension, health care, it's all gone. Whatever's in the contract, it's gone. So it's very important for them to get to, to, to get a new contract, and that's why they have the right to strike sooner. Under the Railway Labor Act, on the other hand, there's more long-term stability because our contracts stay in place. So while we're bargaining, we still have all those protections that's in our contract that we've negotiated for over all those years. And we can still bring grievances, and we can still enforce our work rules, and we still have health care or pension or whatever else may be in our contract. That is really vital to our members. In addition to that, you know, the, the Railway Labor Act also uh, governs the organizing and the representation applications. And there's a lot of exciting organizing going on right now on both the rail and the air side. And so in that way, it's going to continue to protect our members uh, for a long time to come.